This video is made possible by Maro. Maro is the new revolutionary platform for NEET PG, AIMS, PGI and DNB exams. With over 640 hours of recorded video lectures and more than 28,000 highly selected MCQs on all undergraduate medical subjects, Maro focuses on concept-based learning which is essential to perform better in the PG entrance exams. Maro has interactive test series with subject-wise tests, mini-tests, grand test series with image-based questions from important and recent trends in medical field. Maro test series simulates the real NEET PG exam with high probability MCQs giving you the extra edge. Download for free now and be exam ready. Links in the description below. In this video, we will learn about the process of translation. Translation is the second step in gene expression. Gene expression is the process by which information stored in your DNA in the form of genes is used in the synthesis of functional gene products. These gene products are mainly proteins which have numerous functions in your cells like repair and maintenance of cells, energy synthesis and enzymatic actions on biochemical reactions. Gene expression essentially occurs in two steps. It begins in the nucleus with the process of transcription in which the information on the DNA is copied into a RNA. This RNA is known as the messenger RNA or the mRNA since the main job of this RNA is to carry this information or message outside the nucleus and use it to perform the second step of gene expression known as translation. In translation, the message stored on the mRNA is decoded in a ribosome to produce a specific amino acid chain or polypeptide. Make sure to watch the video on the first step of gene expression, the transcription for a better understanding of the complete topic. Also make sure to watch the videos on structure of nucleic acids and DNA as it will help you to utilize this video in a much better way. All the links are in the description below. Let's first have a brief look onto what are the structures in the cell that make the process of translation possible. Besides the messenger RNA, translation also requires another type of RNA known as the transfer RNA or the tRNA. Ribosomes are dedicated cellular machineries that make this whole process possible. The ribosomes read the message on the mRNA and the tRNA transfers individual amino acids to the ribosome according to the sequence of base pairs on the mRNA. These amino acids are then joined together by bonds to form a protein. So the process of translation occurs in three basic steps. First step is known as initiation in which the ribosome assembles around the target mRNA. In the second step known as elongation, the tRNA transfers amino acids to the ribosome which are joined together to form a polypeptide chain. In the last step known as termination, the ribosomes release the polypeptide when it reads a stop signal on the mRNA. Don't worry if you don't understand these steps yet, we will look at the details of this process in just a bit that will help you to understand this complex cellular process. Now let's look at where this process takes place in the cell. It's slightly different for eukaryotes and prokaryotes. In prokaryotes, the translation takes place in the cytoplasm. In eukaryotes, the translation occurs in the cytoplasm or across the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. What happens is that when the ribosomes bind to the mRNA, this whole complex then attaches to the endoplasmic reticulum. The new protein is synthesized and released into the endoplasmic reticulum. This protein can be stored inside the endoplasmic reticulum or released in the future or it can also be secreted immediately. Before going into the details of process of translation, it's important to learn about a few concepts. The main machine which plays a central role in translation is ribosome. Ribosomes are complex molecular structures found inside all living cells and they act as a site for protein synthesis. The ribosomes essentially consist of two major components, a small subunit and a large subunit. The unit of measurement used to describe the ribosomal subunits is the Swedberg unit, which is a measure of the rate of sedimentation in centrifugation rather than size. In eukaryotic ribosomes, the smaller subunit is 40S and the larger subunit is 60S. When they join, they are denoted as 80S. These subunits lie separately in the cytoplasm until they need to come together for translation. These subunits have different jobs as well. The small subunit reads the mRNA, whereas the large subunit joins the amino acids to form a polypeptide chain. Now assuming you have watched the videos on structure of nucleic acids and DNA, you know that the information of the genetic code is stored in the form of base pairs with four main bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. 
In RNA, we have uracil in place of thymine. Now the cornerstone to understand the process of translation is to understand what is a codon. A codon is basically a sequence of three DNA or RNA bases. When a mRNA goes inside our ribosome, the ribosome does not read individual bases, but rather these sequences of three bases which are known as codons. Each of these sequences of three base pairs corresponds to a specific amino acid. For example, if three uracil bases are in sequence, which means the code will be U, 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 the ribosome will read this code and the amino acid that is used will be phenylalanine. Similarly, if the code is U, C, C, the amino acid that will be used is serine and so on. The codon AUG codes for the methionine and is also the start codon which signals the ribosome to start synthesizing the protein. Similarly, we have three special codons which signal the ribosome to stop synthesizing the protein. These are UAG, UAA and UGA. These are known as stop codons and when the ribosome read these, they know that the protein is now complete and their job is done. Now let's get into the details of translation. So the first step in translation is known as initiation. This is a transfer RNA or tRNA which has an amino acid methionine bound to it. This tRNA attaches to the smaller subunit of ribosome and when it encounters a mRNA, it starts reading the code on the mRNA from its 5' end. As soon as the tRNA ribosome finds the start signal, the AUG codon, it immediately binds to the larger subunit to form the complete ribosome and the protein synthesis is initiated. The next step in the process is elongation. Elongation is when the polypeptide chain gets longer. In the larger subunit of ribosome, we have three slots or sites which are named as E, P and A. I'll explain these sites with a simple concept. Like I told you, the first tRNA to attach to this mRNA complex is a tRNA with amino acid methionine. This tRNA occupies the P site. P stands for peptidyl site. Now on E side of the P site, we have two more sites the E and the A site. And here is the mRNA in the smaller subunit. Now what happens is the A site receives the next tRNA which matches the codon next in the sequence. If you zoom in, we can see that the first codon is the start codon, the AUG, to which the tRNA attached will have the amino acid methionine. Now if the next codon is UAU, the tRNA attached to the A site will have amino acid tyrosine. So this tRNA is now occupying the A site. Now we know the main job of translation is to form a protein which is essentially a chain of amino acids. So what we need next is to form a bond between the amino acid on the tRNA in the P site and the amino acid on the tRNA in the A site. After this, the tRNA in the P site loses its amino acid and becomes empty, after which the ribosome moves and now you can see that the tRNA in the P site moves to the E site which is the exit site and the tRNA in the A site moves into the P site. The A site thus becomes empty and ready to receive the next tRNA. So the P site always holds the growing polypeptide chain. This process is repeated again. For example, if the next code is CGU, the tRNA that will enter the A site will have the amino acid arginine attached to it. Next, the bond will form between the small polypeptide chain and the amino acid on the tRNA in the A site. Again, this tRNA becomes empty and the mRNA moves again, repeating the whole process until we get a polypeptide chain of desired length. The next step in the process is known as the termination. The ribosomes must have a way to know where to stop so that we get a final protein of desired number of amino acids. This is possible because the mRNA actually contains stop signals which is known as the stop codon. When the ribosome reads any of the three codons, the UAG, UAA or the UGA, it stops the process of translation and the polypeptide chain is released from the translation complex. So after the ribosome finishes the protein synthesis, is the protein complete? Not really. After that the protein is formed, it goes through some additional processing like some amino acids may be deleted and some proteins also undergo folding to form a more stable structure. So this was a brief overlook about the process of translation.
Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video and all the other free educational videos on this channel helpful, you can now support Math Simplified on Patreon.com for literally the price of a coffee cup. This will allow me to fund my work and make more videos like this and will also unlock some cool Patreon only exclusive content like behind the scenes of these videos, upcoming videos, early notifications and exclusive flashcards and handouts. Make sure to subscribe us on YouTube for all the upcoming videos and also make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for flashcards, notifications and much more.